I've got a confession to make. I love aquascaping. But that's not the main point of my confession. The main point is that uh, building planted tanks and shooting videos is not easy for me. I know, why would you care? Because you're just watching and enjoying the videos and, uh, and this is a personal thing. But fact is that uh, while I'm shooting and building a planted tank, my attention is split between the video production, between me explaining what I do, and uh, between me enjoying the hobby or building the planted tank. So I cannot concentrate fully on the creation. I know this is a personal thing and uh, it's just me, but uh, sometimes I do have to put you guys on the sidelines and I'm sorry for that. And I just have to live for my passion. And that means that you're not able to follow step by step what I'm doing with the planted tank. Why did I give you this introduction? Because today's video is about this, is about me enjoying the hobby while putting you guys on the sidelines. So we will begin this video by me explaining to you guys how this hardscape was born and why I enjoyed it. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. I hope that you'll forgive me. On a cold night. On a cold night. It all started with the inspiration. The guys, Tommy, and then Victor and Tommy, Victor mainly, hopefully, <laughs> Tommy said that, have built two great tanks. One is right here next to me, the 120p tank built with ironwood, and it's still half empty because Tommy had promised to put some details in the background. And the second one is the 90 centimeter cube tank which was built by Victor. These guys have put the bar really high. These guys are talented aquascapers. They know what they're doing. What I have to do is to build this 120p tank for you guys in today's video and uh, hopefully not screw it up. <laughs> Inspiration. IAPLC 2021, position number 11, Vietnam Aquascape by V Lam. I love this. I love the way that he kind of conventionally closed up the left and the right side of the tanks. I love the way that this valley stretches. It's a wide valley. And I love the way how everything is leading the eye towards the end point, a very narrow line in the middle. So this was the original inspiration. And you can see how different this cape already is from that. So what happened? First of all, I took the Redmoor pieces, the two big pieces on the left side and the right side, and I put them in the corner. And then I soon realized that obviously it's not enough to have two red more pieces in two sides. I need to add more. And I started to add smaller and smaller pieces that would lead the eye from the left to the midpoint and from the right to the midpoint as well. The midpoint is not in golden ratio. It turned out to be almost exactly in the middle. So this is going to be a symmetric tank, which is not very fortunate, but what can you do about it? Another thing that I wanted to do is to use the red moor in a way that we didn't use it before. To use only the bulky, bigger pieces of red moor in the foreground. Why? Because if you check this picture again, you will see that the foreground, immediately at the front glass, you've got maybe like five or 10 centimeters from the front glass, you've got these high rising structures which was used by me actually in the uh, 450 tank. That added a lot of depth to the tank. And I knew that I wanted to use some kind of grayish rocks, so my choice went to the wild rhino stones, which are very flat stones, almost no texture whatsoever. They look like river stones, and I started to use them horizontally first. So I placed these horizontal ones and I just, you know, found out that it's a good idea to place the wood onto the stone and just to glue them together. And in that way, the stone will keep the wood 
down. So I kind of glued it with this uh, impa glue that we always use. It's a very strong glue. It will hold very firmly. After the structure was done, I just realized that I need to make some terraces in order to be able to, to bring this line towards the top of the tank. And that's why I started using the uh, wild rhino stones vertically. So I've tried to find stones that fit exactly in between the two branches. And that was a good thing because you don't see where the stone ends because it's behind the branch. So it's like the trees would grow out of the hill. After I did that, obviously I glued the hell out of it. After I was done with gluing, I also used some little stripes of uh, fine filter mesh in order to, to fill up all the holes. Because if I didn't do that, the solid particles would roll forward and just go onto the sand, which is not filled in yet. And then I filled the base layer fertilizing substrate, ADA Power Sand Advanced M. And then I used a lot of ADA Aquasol Amazonia version two. I found out that it's a good idea to bring up the soil level all the way to behind these big wood pieces. So actually the wood pieces are making the barrier between the sand and the plants that are in the background. You have to take into consideration that these wood pieces will become a lot darker. So this is the color difference. And then after I was done with that, I was starting to think what kind of sand and what kind of detail do I want to use. And as you guys are gonna see it live now, I'm going to use the JBL Zanzibar Dark. And I'm going to use the Danelea River S, right? I, I remember that. I'm not very good with names. This is why I always fail at the uh, quiz games. And I failed miserably. <laughs> so congratulations. This was fun. This video is getting too personal. <laughs> Talking about my memory, about my preferences. What the hell, Baj? There are two big problems that I have with this tank. The first big problem is that there are no lines connecting the two sides to the middle. So everything is pointing backwards. Nothing is pointing downwards and, and towards us. The root structure of these wood pieces is missing. And the second problem is that there's no perspective. There are no smaller things in the background that would suggest that this is a very deep tank. So I use the stone structure to create kind of a rocky hill mountain look in the background in the left side and in the right side suggesting that this is closer to us i created something that is heavier but then the whole accent of the tank has shifted towards the left side can you see that the tank is heavier on the left side because the perspective is there and there's no perspective on this side i need some feedback guys rule number one if it needs explaining it's not working <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the idea behind it. You know it or you don't know it subconsciously. This is what I wanted to do. In the middle, at the end of the path that is not yet created, at the end of that path, I need some perspective. So I need to add something that, that would lead the eye to it. So later, when the sand is in, I'm going to put in some small pieces. Okay, so what did I forget? Let me check. At the end, I added all the flat stones to the foreground. The foreground is supposed to be flat, which is gradually moving to the vertical direction of the rocks. Another problem is we needed to pre-rinse this sand. See, it doesn't want to come out. It's, it cannot be used really. I can try this. I have no idea how much to use. What I'm going to do is to keep spraying it but the color is good. I like the color. You see that cut here? I did it because I needed to like, continue this line and this was another wood and I'm just gonna cover that cut with some plants. Now I have some rocks that are covered with sand and I'm not sure that they're gonna be coming out later so I need to put some other rocks on top. Lori, can you help me like filling it up with water until like like two centimeters so that this whole thing is covered because I cannot work otherwise. What do you think, Chubby? I like it. You like it? Well, this is the last thing because the hardscape is kind of ready, I guess. 
So it's time to add the details, right? Can you help me take out the foreground? Because I don't like the, the way that it's not even. Everything for the video production. This is why I told you in the beginning that I don't have these problems when I'm doing something for myself and I don't show it on video. This wet sand is killing us today, right? Don't do this at home. Anobias, Nana Mini. So we could put it here at the bottom or we could put it up. The plants are not living on the tree and at the bottom of the tree in nature. I need some big pinatifida and that big pinatifida should go on both sides. Actually, we are reusing these plants from an old aquarium. So this tenel is green. I would push it in at the end of this path. You can use it in the foreground if you trim it regularly, but I would just use it in the midground here. And I'm using it in bunches, not as a carpet. Before I continue, I'm going to go with the Sterogyne Repens. We use the biggest bush that I found in here. I don't want to use any of the Tenellum green over there on that plateau, on that highland. I used it here because I want this to look closer to us. I want this to look a little bit heavier. Cryptocorini parva. I could have it grow in the middle here. What is, what is happening here? Why is here a rock? The parva looks good there. It adds a little bit of detail. So Lori's idea was to remove this from here and to place it in the back. And I'm listening to him. I'm tempted to put another pot here. Let's go stealing. Don't forget to spray the plants while you're planting, guys, because if they dry out, you can lose them. I wanna go with the hair grass. That's going to be a long, long, long story. The inside of this pot has smaller ones. The smaller ones actually will go somewhere on the path. Also, we need to finish the end to have some cliffs in there, except I don't see that at all. And I don't see that because it's not high enough. Very artificial looking, right? But on photo, it looks great. I think the parva is a great addition to this uh, wild rhino stone because the color of it, the bright green color, matches the darker color of these rocks. So it will create a very clean, very nice matching look.
Let's go with the Marsilia Crenata, which is the smaller Marsilia. I kind of like to use it in between the uh, grass in order to make a little bit of detail. You don't see it now, but when it's filled up, it's gonna pop out nicely. Do not go anywhere because we're gonna show you how this tank looks in three weeks in a minute. But before that, I'm gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like about this tank. What are the pros and cons of this layout? So the first pro is that, I'm gonna start with the good part, right? So the first pro is that, that you've got nice colors. The, uh, the greens go match well, the colors of the rocks. You've got the nice line leading the eye towards the back. And also I kind of achieved my initial plan to have this very open valley. Big bulky uh, red moor wood pieces look really good here in the foreground. And then you've got terraces. So like I kind of achieved what I wanted to. And this leads us to one of the first problems, the tank is not full. So this is an open space tank, but the background should be more filled up with rocks and everything. So, and this also leads us uh, to the second problem that it doesn't have any perspective. The root structure is not connecting the lines and accentuating the line of this very open space in the middle. So everything is pointing backwards, but nothing is pointing to the middle and towards us a little bit. I had to add these uh, Eleocaris and then these plants on the right side because the uh, fine filter mesh was visible and also here the same problem. I decided not to use any moss because I wanted to accentuate the, the, the curvature of these uh, wood pieces. I think it's a good idea to have it like this. We're gonna observe it for a couple of weeks and if many people say that it's Please let us know in the comment what do you think. I can add the mosses later on. So I think this is it. And now you're going to see how this whole thing looks. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thanks for the support.